What is good guys, this is Charles from Team COG. Coming at you guys here with my Danger Dark World deck profile. I ended up uh, picking this deck up. You know, format's kind of rough for me. Uh, not much really can be said. Uh, plants are fun, you know, but I decided to pick up Danger Dark World. It looked extremely fun, and I ended up picking up those three of the structure decks. Got what I needed for the deck, and kind of just literally did a few test hands. Play tested once or twice with my buddy who uh, ended up getting second place this last weekend with Drytron, which I'll have his profile coming up and I ended up taking this to two locals and going three and one getting second place one night and going three and two getting a uh, fifth or sixth place fifth place at um another locals kind of there's a lot of three ones and there was like some pretty undefeated stuff but um overall uh, there's just you know if you guys have not checked out the video I do like an hour and a half or you know I do my full locals experience uh, called dangers at locals you guys can check that out and just due to my work schedule and stuff that's probably how we will more than likely be doing a lot of like uh, locals gameplay moving forward because guys I don't you know like my, my life I hit rock bottom guys ain't gonna lie to you guys but and uh, things have just kind of got a little bit different a little bit more difficult but the only way to go from rock bottom is straight up so that's what we're gonna be able to do uh, now uh, to be able to bring you guys um, solid content and uh, check those out they're long time man but I like uh, it was my first time playing the deck so there's some minor misplays and stuff like that and I can show you guys my list here and uh, not really uh, I'd show you some changes I'd make, some changes I did make. Uh, this is probably not your most typical uh, Dark World because like I did a lot of research uh, before playing the deck. I did, didn't just go into like locals blind with it. I ended up uh, definitely doing some research to understand like what the goal of the deck was. And it just was outside of knowing what to do with the deck. I pretty much just, you know, really went in blind. There's like, the, you know, if you guys are familiar with me, I like set combo line decks. Like not really set combo lines, but a little bit of flexibility in the combo lines. Uh, this deck is just full flex. There's like no single two or three cards get you anywhere because of the RNG stuff with it. So without enough of that, guys, please remember if you guys want to help support the channel, check the links down in the description below. If you guys enjoy the sleeves, check out Imperium Duelist, use our code. And uh, other than that, guys, I actually believe we'll be having playmats coming back soon and the store will be opening as well. So just stay tuned for that. But let's just enough of that. Let's just get on into the deck profile. Uh, so to start out with, guys, uh, not much more can be uh, said, but we are playing three uh Rainbow, the overking of the Dark World. This card's insane. It's new a card, and it's not once per turn. Uh, kind of crazy, but we play three of this, two Graffa, and I've seen some lifts uh, not play three. I've seen Sunless play two, and just for OCD sake, I like three. I, I always want to open like one of these guys in because it's just you know you ditch this, you get a plus for Graffa, and then like you get Graffa, you just kind of get get the ball rolling uh, in a way. But that's it for the big ones. I do really much agree with playing two Graffa. Three's too much. One is too little. Three's too much. Two is the right number. Uh, you don't want to risk this getting banished, and then um, you don't have access to make your fusion, which your fusion's pretty pretty insane. Uh, but, yep, that is it for the high level, or I shouldn't say the high level, that's it for, like, the level 8 Dark Worlds. And then this card is, like, is really cracked. Uh, 3 Jinta. Uh, the fact that this card is not once per turn is insane, and the fact that it special summons itself uh, when it's banished, that is once per turn, but the discard to add uh, Gates of the Dark World is not... Uh, this card is pretty, really good. This is what, like, the cards this deck got really got overshadowed because it came out right when Tear was around. Uh, but I think the cards this deck, this, this is why this deck is gaining popularity is because now that Tear's gone, this deck is actually having the moment to shine. And I think people are starting to understand, like, just how good uh, the deck is. But this card is pretty crazy. You want to play three of it. It sometimes, man, it really sucks when you open multiple field spells and, like, Jinta. It just, it, it kind of just, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, you really want to see Jinta plus, like, just a handful of dangers or Jinta plus, like, some Dark Worlds, like, any linear combo. It'd be Jinta plus, like, Rainbow or Jinta plus Snow and, you know, or something like that. Um, Jinta, Jinta plus, you know, Cerulean and Silva is like a rip too, right? So like, uh, triple snow, uh, fun fact guys, if you guys check out one of my really older videos, I actually had this deck like max rarity and then I just got rid of it ages ago and now I kind of miss that. So hopefully, uh, since this will probably be my deck for the format until we get Infernobles or until like, I really am kind of interested in Manadome, this will probably be what I play. So we might see some upgrades. We might see some hollow upgrades. I don't know, but uh, three snow, if you guys don't know what this card does, it's discarded, search any dark world. Snow is pretty cool, it's the road of the deck, discard, lets you search. Uh, and now this is an interesting choice, and I say this because I chose to play this over a lure. Like, my testing has all went with lure, and I decided to trade lure for three brow. And I did that because I had so many instances where I was luring into a lure, and I don't know if it's just bad luck, my lures were sticking together, but every time I activated lure, I'd always draw into another one, and I'd be forced to banish a danger or banish, like, a good dark world name. So brow just allowed me to have an additional name that if it got discarded i got to draw right so like all of a sudden my gates of the dark world is a plus one right so banish discard in, in a sense like in a sense it's just getting me more hand advantage and then like in those scenarios where like cerulee summons to their side of the field or grapha the fusion you can like pitch brown draw two which is kind of insane i i really enjoyed this over 
the allures because it was an additional name and more monsters so i didn't have to worry about having like a, a card in my hand i didn't want to uh set and it just allowed me to keep my uh percentages with revealing dangers up because like you have a lore you want to set a lore and that increases the chance of them hitting the danger um so like brow just sorry, brow is remarkable i actually will probably keep playing brow moving forward uh two silva uh, this card is if you guys know what this is this is how we hand loop uh so you use it, you use Cerulea to summon you use Cerulea to ditch this card from your hand. Cerulea makes it treated as it was discarded by an opponent. Silla comes back, take exactly two. Your opponent takes exactly two cards, put them to the bottom of the deck. Quite crazy. And then one Cerulea. Uh, this is why the deck is like really good. And what gives the deck like a really good going first. Like this card just says if it's discarded, you special summon it to the opponent's side of the field, and then it lets you makes your opponent discard a card, which is you. Uh, so then you get to proc like effects like Silva, where like I just said, you discard Silva. It's treated as it was discarded as by an opponent's card effect. Silva comes back, rips two. Brow, draw two. Snow, you get to, I believe, special one from the opponent's graveyard. Uh, Graffa, if Graffa gets discarded this way, you get to pop a card and rip, look at the opponent's hand and rip a random card. Look at one random card in your opponent's hand, and then if it was a monster, you can special summon it to your side of the field. So like, it allows you to do some like pretty cool stuff. Like So this, is, this card right here just single-handedly just allows it for your opponent to like discard effects. Uh, which is really cool. The combo, if there is a combo, uh, you're pretty much drawing through your deck, digging through your deck to get to Cerulee and to some fash some form of fashion Cerulee with Silva and a way to discard Cerulee. And then you just loop Silva back to your hand by using cards like Rainbow or uh, Graffa. And then you just have the ability to bounce this card back using cards like Akashic Magician and or um, Security Dragon. That's it for the danger, or I keep wanting to say that because it's Danger Dark World. So I want to say Danger first. That's it for the Dark Worlds. Uh, moving on to the Dangers. Uh, there i will show you guys like my danger lineup like i've seen so many different danger lineups when i've been like researching this deck and watching videos i'm trying to understand like the basic combos and the basic like the theory behind the deck uh, so i'll explain to you guys like my theory with the dangers and what dangers are mandatory so with that being said uh, we are on to the most important danger that you have to play at three in my opinion is three danger nessie uh, this is the best danger in my uh, in my own personal opinion it discards it replaces itself it's the best one you want to capitalize on. Play double Bigfoot and one Thunderbird. And I do this because of the, the level eight. So you want to probably play three level eights in your list. I do not think I'd ever up Thunderbird. Like maybe if we went to a format where we had more back row heavy decks, you would replace this lineup with two Thunderbird and one Bigfoot. Right now, this is perfect. I'm a huge uh, Cryptid fan. So like being able to play these cards is just amazing uh, to me. This is finally a deck I can play them in like if you guys ever watch my live streams and stuff, like I can go hours on, you know, all the documentaries and all the videos I've watched about Bigfoot and, you know, the same thing about Nessie. A double Mothman. So I believe this, at the bare minimum, you need to play some form of these right here. Uh, Nessie and Mothman. Mothman is the best danger you have because when it gets discarded, you still get to proc your own dangers and your own dark worlds. Whereas these cards right here are really like, I think three level eights are also necessary, but they're flexible. I hate Ogopogo. I think Ogopogo is actually useless. Uh, you are there are some like cool things where you could like go Ogopogo. If Ogopogo gets hit, you can dump like danger response team, and then you get like to do stuff like that. You don't want to do that. You just don't want to do that, in my in my opinion, right? So like, at the end of the day, you play your danger lineup the way you want to. I think eleven to twelve dangers is kind of correct. Uh, but anyway, moving on, we have the one Jackalope, the one Chupacabra, and the one Suchinoko. Uh, you could probably get away with playing two Chup. If I was to increase my count to twelve, uh, Chup would probably be what I'd want to uh, play it as. And I believe I have one card in the list that's kind of a flex spot. Uh, well, I have a few flex spots, um, but definitely you could cut this card uh, to play an additional Chupacabra. So that's it for the danger lineup. Again, we're playing 11 dangers. If you wanted to, you, I'd, I'd probably say 12 is the perfect number, but 11 is okay. Continuing on to the spells. That's it for the monsters, guys. Like more than three fourths of our deck is monsters, which is good. This is what we want. And then all of our spell cards are consistency cards and stuff like that. Uh, so I actually was on to three gates. I mean, this, I, I hate, man, Gates, I actually wish you could play less of this card. But because you play three Genta, so you can search it, but it's not a hard once per turn, so you want to play three of it, so you can keep drawing and keep digging into stuff and keep getting effects going. But, man, it sucks opening, like, Genta and two Gates, or it is what it is. It's a, it's still a cracked card, not once per turn. It boosts your monsters. I am on to double a session, and I think two a session is correct, because you always kind of, even though you can recur from the graveyard, if this one gets banished, you have access to another. Uh, this is the fusion spell, which is insane. I wish I could find another fiend or another fusion that I could fusion with Dark World Obsession. Uh, just to be kind of cool. Um, I know like you don't get the cool discard effect uh, since you're not fusioning something for a Dark World, but that kind of gives me hope that one day we're going to get another Dark World fusion, which will be kind of interesting. And my the most I hate this card, guys. I literally hate archives. Uh, this card does not do anything for you. Like 
it gives you a discard outlet if you have dark worlds i believe that's how it's ruled you can't pitch this card if you don't have any dark worlds to boost so if you see this card doesn't even get a discard effect like the, the ability to like draw two discard one is like cool i would actually prefer to play another danger over archives i know people are like obligatory this is a one of it has cool utility but throughout all my games every time i saw this card it was just a card that just sat in my hand and didn't do nothing I mean, yeah, once I got the, I luckily, because it's RNG based, right? Like I was able to luckily get good hits off my dangers and my draws. Archives became useful, but archives didn't do anything with getting the engine started. And once you start the engine going, that's what you need to do. Sometimes you open hands where they hit you one danger, it's game over. And if you open archives and that happens, you're, you're just sitting there screwed. So at least by playing a, like an additional danger or something like that, um, archives did something. But I truly believe uh, two accessions is correct. Now this was an interesting card I played. I played this over tactics and I will tell you guys my logic with it because I actually enjoy this card and out of all my games, this card overperformed. And I definitely played uh, two drag down to the grave. If you guys don't know what this card does, both players reveal their hand, then discard one card from the opponent's hand to the graveyard, then we draw a card, right? So what kills this deck? If you guys are familiar with Darting Dark World, Droll. So my theory was that Tactics is too slow to hit the Droll. Once I add my first card, they Droll me. Tactics, you know, Tactics can do something, but it doesn't stop the Droll. Like what I'm gonna do with Tactics is not impact the game as much as if I didn't get Droll, right? So drag down allows for multiple things. Drag down allows for you to be able to look at the opponent's hand, and if you see they have Droll, a hand trap, etc., get rid of it. And then you put them on the card they draw has to be the exact copy of what you discard, right? I know, I know some people are gonna say, well, this right here can sometimes correct the opponent's hand, but you're not just correcting the opponent's hand. You're literally getting a draw, dis letting your, forcing your opponent to discard a card of your choice sometimes and getting your engine going. That's what this card does. So like, yeah, they get to, you get to rip a card from their hand and you get hand knowledge, which is insanely, insanely important. And they get to draw a card, but what you get out of all this is way more, way more. And uh, I preferred this over tactics, like I said, because tactics is reactive. Uh, into going into like games two and three if you see this card you literally frame one activate it look at their hand if they have droll you rip it and then they better draw that next droll and if they do well they got it right like the statistical chances of them drawing another droll is slim to none and sometimes man you'll activate you'll see two drolls you mean like it's, it's Yu-Gi-Oh, right this isn't a for sure card game statistics probability all that stuff weigh in uh, the point of this is is all they have to do all you have to do is get rid of, rid of the one droll or the one hand trap and your game is golden. And then if your hand is kind of stacked, drag down kind of forces your opponent to do something too. So you literally get to proc your own effects. Whereas if I open a handful of dark worlds, right? If I open any dark world, minus Ginta, Ginta, but like any snow, brow, heck, even like rainbow, tactics doesn't do anything. I've literally had to pass multiple turns with just tactics. So I think this card is really slept on. I think if you guys don't have this card, I think you should try it out. I think it overperforms in tactic. You side into tactics when you know you're going first. And, uh, so you have the ability to counter hand traps, or you know, maybe Tactics is a great going second card. I've sided into it going second, but I think this is main deck worthy over Tactics because of its reactive ability. Uh, like I said, you see a handful of danger, or you know, you even see a mix, right? And all of a sudden they're just sniping your dangers right out of the thing. You're not getting your draws. Uh, drag down can proc the Dark World effects, which is good, which can get the engine going too, because all it takes is literally, you know, discard adds uh, discard snow, snow adds. Genta, Genta adds Dark World, Dark World Banish, ban like you just you see the snowball takes man, and that's what this card does. I'm not gonna go over it too much, but I do believe this card is better than Tactics. I think this card is remarkable in this deck. I, I think that moving forward, especially if this deck continues to get like the rogue popularity, and maybe it's just a local call, like I can't tell you how it does in like the meta scene, but like at the locals I went to, we have our locals is kind of like really roguish. Uh, this card still overperformed in both locals, so definitely check this card out. It comes in common in the in the. Uh, Structured decks, I believe, so just use them. Try them. You know, I'm not going to tell you what to play. If you prefer tactics, do it. Uh, one, Called by the Game. Uh, called by the Grave is literally uh, insane. Uh, even, I actually kind of hate it's insane because of what it's a one of, it's a Saki one of. It stops Droll. There's not really any hand traps this deck really fears because, like, it can eat through an Ash. It can eat, it really, in Perm, Veiler, all that stuff doesn't really hurt it. Uh, more so, Bestials aren't being played mass, but DD Crow can hurt the deck too. But, like, who's playing DD Crow? Uh, the only hand trap that really stops this deck Dennis tracks is draw and lockbird so of course you want to play the one sack you want of uh, i did find myself siding this card out because you would rather see more gas in this card i really hate hands that i see this card simply because it just doesn't do anything for your strategy like if your hand is full of dangers again call by doesn't do nothing drag down drag down here though 
drag down with a handful of dark rolls can get your game going. So uh, that's it uh, for the final two cards, uh, one card destruction, and for a, like kind of a flex spot is a foolish burial. I, I wanted to play this because again, this is like additional copies of like rainbow and stuff like that, additional copies of Grapha. So in a series, in like a series where if you draw a normal summonable dark world, right? You draw like Brow, Snow, or Genta. Uh, you can just literally foolish burial rainbow bounce back to genta bounce back to snow summon a big body uh it it really it's really kind of good it actually got me out of a game where i got ended up getting like a window locked and the only interaction was window it was actually i think i'm pretty sure don't quote me it, it was in my locals video i foolish burial for rainbow normal summon bounce back rainbow that was my only special of the term and rainbow just whacks over window because it's huge and that was that. Like, so this card, I mean, it's a flex spot. You can play whatever you want with it, but I think Foolish and Card Destruction is good. Uh, I did not play Zephyros the Elite, uh, mostly because I did not have one, but this could technically be Zephyros too. Uh, you'd play whatever you want. Again, Zephyros um, just didn't have one. So this was my kind of my replacement here and it worked pretty phenomenal. I mean, I'm not too big of a fan. I, I understand what Zephyros is used for. However, Zephyros again, doesn't do anything in your bad hands. It makes bad hands worse. It makes good hands better. So we were just trying to capitalize. We were, we were playing on the assumption that we're always going to open bad. And sometimes, man, RNG is not on your favor. I'm, I have horrible luck, so RNG was not on my side. So having the ability to kind of like counteract the bad RNG does come up. Anyway, moving on to the extra deck. Um, I'll kind of freeze, breeze this. Grapha, this card is crazy. This card's cracked. This is probably one of the best fusion cards you could ever ask for. Don't know what it does. I'll tell you. It allows uh, when a monster spell, normal spell or trap is activated, you change the effect to you discard. So then you're able to proc like Silva and stuff like that. And it just, it's kind of, it's, it's an Omni Gate without being Omni Gate. Uh, they remove this card by any type of means, by an opponent's card. Uh, you get to summon back Grapha and then both players discard a card. So literally you can like hand loop two just by like Grapha. It's kind of, kind of insane. Really good support for the deck. Good job, Konami. Uh, to the Nightmare Package, uh, one Phoenix, one Cerberus, one Unicorn, and there should be a Griffin. 100% play Griffin because Muckracker is an insane card, but Muckracker locks you into fiends. And why Konami decided to make like Dark World cards, like have no restrictions, all that stuff, Muckracker does. But this is a good thing. Definitely play Griffin. I'll show you guys like the cards I would potentially play, or, or yeah, play instead of for Griffin, excuse me. But Phoenix, Cerberus, Unicorn, definitely play them because you can pitch dangers, you can draw cards, you can trigger dangers. Sadly, they do not trigger Dark World. I completely just spunk, spaced the entire thing that the pitching is cost. Remember, Dark Worlds only trigger under pitching for effect, not cost. Whereas Dangers, as long as they're discard, they don't care. Uh, Muckcracker is literally one of the most busted uh, supports like this deck could have gotten. It's literally discard is not a cost, it's an effect. It, pr it provides protection. The only thing that sucks is it's literally, it says it locks you into Fiends. And if you guys don't know, we only have literally one good Fiend extra deck monster, and that is Grapha. Grapha is the only good Fiend extra deck monster that I can think of outside of like going into Griffin. That's sometimes what you want to do. Sometimes like I come, I caught myself literally ending on Muckcracker up here, Unicorn or Cerberus here, plus like two other monsters. And I was like, dang, I could just link into Griffin, pitch a card, reset my quick play spell and like be set. But instead your boy does not play Griffin. And I would left with these monsters hanging out here. One Akashic, one Security Dragon. Uh, these cards right here are to bounce back Cerulee. Not much really can be said. Very much, I found myself a lot of times putting good dangers here or here. And then when I'd summon Akashic, I'd bounce back Cerulee and my danger and then just use the danger again further down the turn. It was really, it was really cool. Like this deck has a lot of interesting things. Security Dragon, uh, just bounce back, pretty good. On to Link 4s, we're rocking one Skull Dread, one Bow of the Goddess and one Access Code Talker. Uh, you could definitely 100% take out Access Code for the Nightmare Griffin. Uh, this card came up once, but really didn't need it again. I needed Griffin way more than I needed this card. Uh, the only other option you could take it out for would be Dweller, which I have, but Dweller is just so good that I feel like the deck can put up level fours pretty, I mean, that can get Gent out really easy and then like you could normal summon and then you have like Mothman and then Chupacabra as level fours too. So I feel like Dweller is just better kept. Definitely Griffin can come in for access code. Uh, you always make this with three to four material. This just correct hands. Nothing else can be said. Uh, moving on to XYZs, Douglas, the Watchless, Abyss Dweller, Coach King, and Hope Harbinger. Uh, sometimes, man, sometimes you can't get to the hand rip, man, and it just kind of just stinks. So you got to like understand and calculate your resources and know where you need to call it. So the best board I was able to end on without hand ripping my opponent, well, I'll take that back. I was able to rip two cards from their hand on their turn, but it was Apollosa for three, Hope Harbinger and the Grapha Fusion with a Sylvan hand. So the first thing they activated, I just used Grapha, put two cards back, and then I literally had the Apollosa and the Hope Harbinger to be able to negate stuff. But 
And this is pretty good because Hope can, like, if you have, like, a weaker Apollosa, Hope goes to... They, as soon as they try to crash an Apollosa, you make him attack Hope, which is really good. And that is it for the XYZs. I'll show you guys my side deck. Um, side deck is definitely going to change a lot, but, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, three Cyclones, definitely got to play for back row. I was on to three Book of Moons. I don't I don't really like Eclipse, um, but you could definitely play Eclipse. But I don't like the draw of Eclipse because it could be Ashed, uh, but this was just for Kash Tira. Uh, I was, this was a cool tech, right? I was playing three sales bin. Uh, this card is just an interesting thing. I would definitely probably play Dark Ruler moving forward. Or maybe, I don't know. Sales bin is real interesting because what you guys do is you declare one card name for the rest of this turn. Your opponent cannot activate cards or the effects of cards with the same name as a declare card. The same restrictions apply to you, but you have it for the rest of the duel. Uh, so sales ban is really cool. Uh, like literally, it's another way to beat Droll. Frame one, sales ban, call Droll and Lockbird, you're good. Call Nibiru, you're good. Just don't side in or call what you play. Like, that would just be kind of insane. But um, the card does do a lot more. Going second, they have Mirror Jade. Sales ban, call Mirror Jade. You're, you're pretty solid. You force the Mirror Jade. Sales ban, call Rise Hearts. So, you know, sales ban, call, cat, you know, whatever you need to, you call it. But I did miss Dark Ruler. And then I sided three Ash. Uh, Ash was just here to hit the Brand of Fusion. You really don't, like, this deck doesn't like playing hand traps. You want to play all gas, so you really watch what you sided into. And the final three cards was Double Tactics, and the third dragged down to the grave. But, like I said, Dark Ruler might go in. But anyway, guys, uh, that will, that'll wrap it up for the profile. Uh, I will definitely do a test hand video of this thing just to kind of just sit here. I mean, this deck is kind of fun to watch, you know? Like, I, I ain't gonna lie. Um, I enjoy watching test hand videos because this deck is so, like, RNG-based that, like, no two hands are gonna be the same. There's no linear combo lines to follow. It's literally whatever your draws, whatever your um, luck is, really. And if you guys don't know, I have really bad luck, so it'll be you'll be seeing the worst of the hands come out here. But other than that, guys, really have a best blast playing the deck, and I believe this will be, like I said, be my deck moving forward uh, up until we get into uh, dueling Nexus with the new Infernoble stuff. But without further ado, guys, please remember if you guys enjoy this content, to give me a like and a subscribe. You guys stay safe, stay healthy. This is Charles from Team COG, signing out.